Okay, uh, uh, good, good afternoon. So first of all, I would like to thank to Professor Deliso Lab for uh, inviting us to uh, present our work. Um, the uh, title of the presentation is on how to generate non-local constitutive behavior. Uh, when we start from a, la a lattice models, the approach is such that we can uh, rather easily uh, generate also continuum limits and continuum kernels. The work is a joint work with Bernard Collet. Uh, why does it does not change the page here? Ah, maybe. If I think maybe it's not full screen. Maybe it's not full screen to. Uh, is it frozen? No. Ah, it works now. Okay, thank you. Uh, so now, uh, okay, here's an overview of what we are looking at. First, we um, look what, what is what approaches are there to on non-local constitutive uh, models. Then we give some motivation and ob objectives and uh, introduce the approach uh, by means of a simple one-dimensional periodic chain, as simple as possible, first of all. And we discuss a simple uh, benchmark example, which we will see. From that we const uh, construct uh, a non-local Laplacian operators, which are actually the key the key uh, um, operators which contain the constitutive, all constitutive information and also uh, on the continuum uh, kernels. Then we, uh, we, do, we will uh, discuss how we can from the here, we are still in the lattice, in the discrete lattice approach in the periodic uh, uh, um, setting and here we discuss uh, the passage to a continuum uh, 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 model. Uh, from this, uh, we will see how from this, uh, how from this uh, discrete Laplacian we will obtain continuum limit kernels, which are uh, which also contain the long wave as eigenvalues, the long wave dispersion relations, and also the elastic kernel is also contained in this uh, Laplacian continuum limit kernels. So afterwards, we look at some examples, uh, Gaussian non-low, uh, often you probably heard from some non-local models uh, which have a Gaussian type of kernel, which is a very natural, very uh, natural choice, which is also can be uh, discussed within this approach. Then uh, you can also do the inverse, uh, solve the inverse problem when you have a continuum limit as elastic kernel, for instance a Gaussian kernel, what lattice potential uh, corresponds uh, to this um, kernel. So we can uh, solve the inverse problem from, from the kernel to the elastic lattice potential. Then we uh, discuss some conclusions, outlook, and um, we have, as we have heard uh, today, we have some new common lines with the work of, of your, uh, uh, Francesco. No? Um, then we have, a, uh, this is by means of a one-dimensional chain with, uh, where each uh, lattice point is uh, one atom. We have also generalized it when we have a polyatomic chain. So we have uh, unit cells with uh, n, uh, 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 a number of n uh, at atoms or n degrees of freedom per lattice, uh, per, uni uh, per unit cell. So I will um, uh, only very short uh, discuss this. So we have uh, a previous works. We have the, uh, all this machinery of lattice dynamics. And non-locality was mostly discussed with some non, uh, with some uh, spring model with uh, some uh, next and next next uh, few neighbor neighboring springs. These are the uh, common uh, quite a lot of models which exist. And on the other hand, we have uh, continuum theories, non-local continuum theories, which were introduced in classical seminal papers of by Ehringen, Kröner and others 
and uh, what is fairly rare um, is, a, is a connection how they, uh, the, uh, the continuum non-local models are linked to a, to a, a, a lattice uh, non-local model. So there are very few, very few uh, works uh, which, which tackle this problem and th uh, this is a bit uh, the, the motivation of the uh, approach to have a systematic uh, um, uh, procedure which links both uh, uh, continuum uh, uh, models and, uh, and uh, uh, lattice models. So, and so the advantage of the, uh, of the approach we are going to see is uh, we have a very simple formulation uh, the, uh, of, of uh, elastic energy. In the, we are only in the harmonic approximation. Then we have uh, any uh, harmonic potential can be uh, written, expressed in this uh, approach as we will see. And um, we have without further calculation directly can get out the uh, vibrational uh, dispersion relation and uh, uh, dynamic characteristics of this uh, system and because we can uh, apply to any constitutive behavior it gives uh, really a method which easily allows to access uh, important uh, dynamical information of the system and it allows straightforwardly calculate uh, continuum limit kernels with the procedure we will uh, see. So the complete constitutive uh, um, so we start now uh, uh, by, by claiming that the complete constitutive information for the one dimensional chain uh, can be condensed in a single uh, scalar function which we call characteristic function. So it contains all. So uh, let's first of all look, uh, uh, consider what kind of system we look at. So we have a, a periodic, a cyclically closed uh, uh, um, a chain, which you can imagine a ring, a ring chain, where the, uh, the uh, in, in uh, particle is the first particle. So we have in, in degrees of uh, uh, freedom, uh, P are the uh, uh, lattice points, and uh, 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 when we add, when we go to uh, uh, jump in to n neighbors further, we are, we make just one round in the ring and we have, uh, are in the same particle. So now a convenient will be when we have a, a lattice sum over all atoms in atoms of the, uh, of the chain. We can uh, let, we, we introduce a density such that it can be written as an integral and the density can be represented uh, as a sum of delta functions. It's normalized that uh, integral of the density is the... Yeah, so yeah, where I have been... Um, yeah, here we, okay, we have cyclic, oh, what is this? Uh, we have cyclic uh, boundary conditions, as we said, so P uh, is to be understood as a cyclic index. Uh, so in the, uh, when we write the total energy with this density can be easily written uh, with this, it's actually a sum over all lattice points and H is the Hamiltonian density uh, which is, has here uh, a dimension, dimension of energy uh, because uh, rho has uh, one over length dimension. So now, uh, le now let's consider uh, uh, the, um, a, a lattice potential. So I have to uh, define, maybe, did I define it before? No, not yet. So, yeah, here uh, it's very um, useful to define the, op the shift operator. So dH is the operator which shifts uh, uh, the, the displacement field by, by the argument of the displacement field of, uh, of uh, amount H. So if H is a lattice distant, distant it, it shifts uh, uh, the particle from uh, uh, point XP from lattice point XP to the neighbor. So if you now you can uh, uh, generate differences of uh, 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 next neighbors, you can write it uh, shift operator minus unit operator applied on X at X equal XP. So why we do this? Because it allows us to uh, generate higher order differences in a very 
What is here? Ah, yeah. In a very uh, compact manner, so we, we can uh, write a, a second difference as uh, just a, a quadratic function of the shift operator. And um, uh, so we now generate a non local uh, harmonic potential such that it is a quadratic form of m's order differences symmetrical to the left and to the right um, uh, uh, of the when x is a lattice po point it involves m next neighbors to the left and to the right so why we, why we do this this will turn out a bit later um, we can uh, uh, generate arbitrarily high orders m um, of orders m potentials even in a chain with finite particle numbers m because of the cyclic uh, condition. So if m uh, exceeds n, uh, it doesn't matter. So it, it, uh, it uh, uh, is, is still on the chain is defined. So the mth order operator is here defined as a uh, in the usual way of uh, of binomial decomposition. So um, further we can uh, generate more, uh, so this is on the lattice, so we can generate now, consider now linear combinations of, of, of different orders m, in general uh, just a series of all orders m um, uh, with, with these harmonic potentials which we introduced just right now. Omega m square are characteristic uh, uh, frequency, so mu, mu is the uh, mass of the atom. So these are actually characteristic stiffness constants which characterize uh, the order, the interaction of, of order M. Note that here this, this operator applied on Ux, this is a, a linear function in the displacement field, so this is a quadratic form uh, uh, of, of um, of, uh, in the displacement U, so it's a harmonic interaction and we define now uh, 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 it's, we uh, allow only um, uh, a combination that it, con it should be converging and positive so that, uh, that means all uh, AM can be uh, we introduce here a co coefficient AM which can take uh, either vanish or uh, change the sign of the order and where, uh, but the whole the whole uh, series should be positive so we can formalize this again uh, again uh, uh, a bit more first of all we introduce a characteristic function f of lambda such that it uh, uh, is converging and that it is positive in this interval we will see in a minute why, why it should be in the interval uh, between 0 and 4. Um, further, uh, it requires that the lower the coefficient with a, uh, a m equal to 0 translational invariance should not uh, change uh, the lattice energy, so the, lo the lowest order should be absent in this, uh, in this series. So, we will see that we can any harmonic potential write in such a in such a series for any any harmonic uh, interaction on the uh, one D monoatomic chain chain. So here, uh, uh, for a very useful observation. This is more technical because we have a periodic. A periodic chain, we can change indices, so we can write this here as a, a, a displacement operator D, as we introduced it here, and we can here uh, deduce some, some matrix relation. D, D plus uh, is the adjoint uh, uh, shift operator, which is, and because we have periodicity, it is uh, D minus H, so it, it shifts to the other direction. So, in general, uh, it's actually nothing but an uh, expression of the general relation when we have a scalar product here with an uh, operator A, we can transport the operator to the other side by adjoining it. In this way, we can now more compactly write the, the lattice 
potential we have here introduced as a series, we can more compact write it in a form. So we can now uh, these, quadrat these quadratic terms, we can uh, write them in, a, in such a form that here is a, a symmetric function in the displacement operator here, which is totally commutative, uh, they commute, so you have here um, a, a, a discrete Laplacian, so this is the operator of a second order difference uh, with the next neighbor. Then you have an only next neighbor springs, you have only this, this guy here in the Born von Karman chain. But we have here uh, 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 any orders of M, and uh, so you can now sum up the, uh, uh, and, and use the definition of the characteristic function. Then you see the, uh, the, the, the harmonic potential uh, before can be written as uh, um, in terms of the characteristic function, where the, in, uh, the argument lambda is now replaced by the second order uh, difference. So any elastic energy on the chain, you can write it in the, uh, this way with a simple, uh, with a, uh, here this characteristic function, uh, which contains all information which we will see in a minute and it, it makes every, very easy any, any calculation because uh, so this is the Born von Karman if you have a, mo a monoatomic chain with only next neighbor with only next neighbor uh, interaction then your F is here, a, uh, is here just to uh, the argument itself then it's a very trivial case you have the Born von Karman chain this can be then written in, in uh, sum of as, uh, in, in that case, you have here only orders, first order, so it's the, uh, the, the, the normal next neighbor chain as we know it. So it's included as a special case. So why is it very convenient? So, um, well, so you can, so yeah, you can now uh, uh, define this in, uh, as a Laplacian uh, in the equation of motion. This, this guy here, uh, 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 oh, it's already, I switched, I switched uh, too quickly. Uh, uh, you see the negative characteristic function uh, multiplied by the mass is nothing as the Laplacian matrix which, is, uh, we, we, uh, which uh, appears in your equation of motion uh, of the chain. So we, um, you can here easily determine uh, uh, the dispersion relation. So let's, for instance, uh, have a quick example. If uh, you, uh, if you have a, um, uh, a, a, a spring model of n uh, of n uh, with springs to the nth neighbor, then you have terms in this form. Uh, then you can uh, uh, write the characteristic function. You have a Laplacian here uh, in this form, which is a second. Uh, order difference between uh, n's neighbors, and now you want to express this in uh, first neighbor uh, Laplacian. And you can, by a very short calculation, you find it uh, uh, in, in the form of such polynomials. Here's a double misprint, by, by the way, here this should be a plus, and here this should be, should be complex conjugate. So the whole, whole thing is uh, real. So uh, our equation of uh, uh, the Hamilton variation principle very easily gives you uh, uh, your uh, equation of uh, your, your uh, Laplacian operator where uh, uh, the following properties are uh, very important because we define the characteristic function uh, as we did. It has all good properties of a Laplacian itself a chain. It means it uh, is a symmetric function in the uh, displacement operators here. It is uh, negative semi-definite, which uh, means uh, elastic stability, uh, which was guaranteed by the positiveness of the characteristic function, and uh, translational invariant because it uh, or it starts with order uh, one, so uh, parallel displacement does not contribute to the 
uh, elastic energy. So now dispersion relation, we all know in the, uh, the dispersion relation of the bon bon von Karman next neighbor thing, we can directly see that it's here a, a four sine square, very well known relationship. And so we can, uh, uh, in our uh, general non-local case, it has, uh, uh, it's, it's just a directly uh, the characteristic function uh, uh, by putting the argument uh, uh, to the eigenvalue of this guy here, gives you directly uh, the dispersion relation of your uh, uh, non-local chain in this form without further calculation because it's an operator matrix function of, the, of this fairly local Born von Karman uh, operator. So now, uh, why is it practical? Because we, we see not only that we can uh, directly get, uh, get uh, all, uh, dispersion relation information, we can also get uh, um, uh, uh, continuum limits of interest. For instance, when we have a periodic string, we can uh, we let the length of the uh, chain we, uh, leave, we keep it finite but uh, the uh, lattice spacing tends to zero. So we have uh, uh, become more, we get more and more particles uh, as a dense chain limit actually. And we can later let L to infinity, then we have an infinite medium limit. So now to uh, make this approach useful, we have the following, have to do some hypothesis. Namely, uh, the hypothesis we do that all, uh, all extensive qu uh, physical quantities, such, such as the elastic energy, uh, all quantities uh, which scale with the size of the system, uh, they should remain finite in the, uh, in the uh, continuum limit. So, especially the elastic energy should remain finite and the entire mass of the string should remain finite. It, it doesn't make sense when the string becomes infinitely heavy or infinitely li uh, light. Also, if the elastic energy would uh, tend to zero or to, uh, diverge, it would not, be a, uh, uh, would not make any sense. So it should be, a, uh, all these quantities should remain finite. Then we do this very simple uh, uh, hypothesis in the beginning, then we, uh, we find scaling, uh, we have the following scaling behavior, uh, necessary scaling behavior of the mass of the particle, namely it, it, scale, it must scale as uh, the lattice spring. So it must be a constant density multiplied h uh, must be the, um, uh, the, 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 the mass of the particle. So the mass particle must become lighter and lighter uh, that the mass be, uh, stays constant. This is rather trivial for the mass, but uh, uh, more interestingly for the, uh, um, for the elastic potential, if we now look on the nth order of this series in the characteristic function, uh, in the potential, we, uh, uh, the, uh, we have the exige, uh, uh, requirement that the nth order uh, must stay finite when h tends to zero. That, uh, here, uh, because here we have the mass, scaling of the mass, we know it already, and uh, we uh, now, uh, the only uh, uh, condition which can, uh, we can impose is here that this characteristic coefficient of frequency must have a certain scaling behavior uh, to keep it finite. So here, the second difference of order m, we can, uh, when we consider it as an as a operator function, so d we can actually, this is maybe, should have said it, d could be, uh, can be uh, uh, as an exponential of the, uh, 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 of the uh, gradient, so to say, of the derivative. And if we write it in this form, we have here uh, this operator form of this uh, uh, representation. And of course, this second difference, it, it, it tends to uh, h square second uh, differences. So you get uh, in the Born von Karman chain with only one next neighbor, you get a, a second gradient in the, um, in the Laplacian. Here, this is the Laplacian. Uh, and the scaling with h square. 
in the in the order of m. This is nothing but the uh, definition of a m's order uh, 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 even order uh, uh, two m's order uh, derivation. With, uh, here with a uh, uh, very important multiplier which occurs because the whole thing is positive. So uh, this le leads to the requirement that when this is uh, remaining constant, uh, uh, this must be inverse scaling as the operator, um, uh, leading to the requirement that your characteristic frequencies need to scale like inverse powers of h. So if you then uh, uh, utilize the, uh, here you have still a lattice sum, but here uh, you have this scaling uh, uh, of the mass which gives you uh, the dx, so to say, in the, in the um, uh, continuum limit. Then you have, a, 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 this is transferred to an integral which here uh, uh, gets our uh, density of, uh, of the m's order just a, 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 a quadratic form of, of a displacement field and a second order, a second order, uh, uh, even orders, uh, even order, uh, orders of derivatives by partial integrations. By the way, you can transfer this in quadrats of m's order. This is you can also do the continuum limit when, you, when the continuum limit is made. Uh, here uh, uh, started with a moment. Yes, it. When you do the continuum limit starting with the, uh, um, where is it? Yeah. When you do it here with the quadratic forms of m's order, you get uh, 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 quadrats of m's derivatives. So you can also directly, so you get gradients of any orders. A series of gradients of any order. So, moment, oh, sorry, I went to the wrong direction. Yeah, so, yeah, you can now, um, now you can introduce a function, another, a continuum, uh, long wave or continuum limit characteristic function, which has here this rescaled or renormalized uh, coefficients. Uh, remember the, the uh, lattice characteristic function? No, I went to the wrong. This is here the, um, uh, the rescaled or yeah, the rescaled long wave coefficient. And it's enough when this, uh, for, any, uh, for an order which is not vanishing, when this is asymptotically for h to zero uh, fulfilled. It, it is enough, and it can also be uh, certainly it can. It's allowed that there are certain certain orders uh, um, uh, do not fulfill this scaling. They can tend to zero. Uh, then you can have here uh, order, vanishing orders. So B M uh, takes account to this fact a fact that you have a, it can have a truncation of constitutive information of the lattice. Uh, so you can, uh, if you have this scaling, then you have uh, the, or the BM is one. If you have a weaker scaling, um, then it, it can vanish. And uh, the, new, the new continuum uh, limit characteristic function must be such that it's again, elastic stability is maintained. So this gives you also uh, imposes you uh, a condition of um, not all, not all uh, BM can be zero uh, uh, simultaneously. Uh, yeah, the, um, yeah. If um, all BM equal to one, that means all orders M have all orders M have this scaling behavior. Then the whole con uh, constitutive information of the lattice is, is maintained in the continuum limit kernel. This is a, uh, uh, if we make this assumption, then we, uh, then we can later reconstruct the, the lattice characteristic function from the continuum 
uh, characteristic function, which allows later, we will see, from the continuum kernel to reconstruct lattice potentials. We will see this a bit later on some examples. So how this, yeah, here again, um, uh, the, the continuum limit uh, uh, elastic potential with a here, uh, this new function, which is uh, uh, a series generated by this rescaled, by this rescaled coefficient. And uh, it's very important, this operator is positive definite. The eigenvalue is k square and the function is positive. So it's a positive, this is a positive operator and this, uh, the Laplacian uh, continuum, Laplacian is negative definite as it must be for a Laplacian. When we write this as a, a sum, here's a, a, a period, the periodic delta function, so representation of this in a, uh, distributional representation. If we write it in here, then we have a, a, a see what kind of gradients uh, uh, in, uh, are, are intervening here. It's important that it starts with m equal to one, so the b b zero must be uh, b one must be one. So the first the first coefficient is actually uh, uh, the usual Laplacian as we. Uh, from from the if, if we have a bond von Karman chain, we have only this term. Only then we have only uh, the uh, second derivative. But here we have all uh, in general all all orders. And uh, in, uh, interesting thing is when we have here, uh, we can also get out the elastic moduli kernel. We, uh, it can be seen that uh, this is connected. Uh, just by a second, second derivative of the um, uh, of the uh, with the elastic uh, with the elastic kernel. I think here's a minus missing, but okay. Um, so the elast uh, distribution a distribution of the elastic of the, yeah this is correct here it's positive definite uh, elastic uh, kernel must be positive uh, definite so. So we have here a series representation in, uh, in distributional sense of the uh, elastic kernel, which correspond to the previous lattice potential which we introduced. Because it works for any lattice potential, in principle we can determine any kernel. So let's, let's uh, and the same also with a, a, a dispersion relation. By doing, by doing the, um, uh, we know the dispersion relation has this simple form in the in the lattice uh, setting uh, uh, in the first prior zone. We can now make the continuum limit, and it occurs here the characteristic continuum uh, function which we have defined just right now, and we get here the uh, continuum dispersion relation in this form, certainly uh, positive, because we have uh, here the restriction uh, made the restriction f tilde is positive. So in the non-truncated case when all Bm are equal to 1, then the full, uh, then the long wave dispersion relation contains the entire constitu uh, constitutive information of the uh, lattice chain and allows to reconstruct uh, lattice potentials. So we will, because it looks maybe a bit dry or abstract, so we will now demonstrate in a uh, let's now uh, consider a, an example. Uh, uh, assume you have a Gaussian uh, 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 one-dimensional infinite, infinitely long chain uh, with a Gaussian uh, elastic modulus. So we want to know now what kind of lattice potential corresponds to an elastic uh, uh, Gaussian modulus when we assume no, no uh, truncation, uh, when we assume all the BM are equal to one. So, if we assume all the uh, uh, no constitutive information has gone lost in the continuum limit, so first, the uh, uh, first step construct the continuum limit characteristic function, which is because of the relation minus because of this relation here. Where is it here? No, I went to the wrong direction, maybe. Uh, I don't know. 
no, no, it's the other direction. Uh, because of this, we, ha we have an easy relation because, uh, between Fourier transform of elastic modulus and continuum limit char uh, characteristic function. And here. Which allows us here, because of the Gaussian, the Fourier transform is here straightforward. So this allows here directly come to the continuum limit uh, uh, characteristic function. And by uh, taking into account the scaling relation between, of the, between these coefficients, when this is true for all coefficients, we can reconstruct the lattice characteristic function by uh, introducing replacing the argument here k uh, uh, wave number by, uh, by, by this guy here uh, and uh, this expressed as a function of lambda is, is the lattice uh, uh, characteristic function replacing lambda by the second order uh, born von Karman Laplacian uh, uh, by regarding it as a matrix function is the uh, Laplacian operator of the discrete uh, uh, system which corresponds here. If we have this, we have also the, the potential, which then is simply is here this quadratic form of this uh, lattice Laplacian with this. The, uh, so, um, uh, uh, we, because we have this in, in, in closed form for the Gaussian, this is kind of a Gaussian uh, uh, exponential dependence where this k square here it appears here as a in operator form. So this is a, a lattice potential which is uh, um, which exists on the periodic chain, which is on the periodic finite chain, which corresponds to this Gaussian uh, kernel by the assumption of non-truncation of uh, constitutive uh, information. Um, some, uh, yeah, some more details you can find it here in the article uh, which you uh, have with me so I can I can pass it to you so for my, uh, some technical details there and yeah so only to have something a bit not too bourbaki it must rather bourbaki maybe so we have also made some pictures so if you if you have now uh, introduced a, a very important thing here, I forgot to say, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> the first order uh, always of this uh, uh, um, dispersion relation it corresponds to the next neighbor, uh, born von Karman, and the rest is, is something which makes the non-locality. So here we can introduce the higher or, uh, with the higher orders, which are summing up. So the first order m equal to one is here, and the higher orders give rise to this factor, where we can uh, characterize this here as a, uh, a non-locality parameter. When the non-locality parameter uh, is equal to zero, but then we have local born von, von, von Karman uh, behavior, next neighbor cha chain. And if, it switch, if we switch on the non-locality, we have here this modified dispersion relation, which we now can have a look here. So uh, gamma equal to zero, or almost zero, is born von Karman, sine square here in the uh, first pre zone, but we can, uh, by switching on, we can here generate rather unusual behavior. For instance, we can create a, uh, a new maximum here in, within the pre zone. Here outside, it's always zero, but from symmetry reasons. It's also clear because the, the characteristic function is a function of sine square, and uh, it can be shown that the uh, derivative always uh, appear, uh, by the chain rule, you see derivatives on the borders of the, is always zero. So you have all these necessary condition, conditions of a lattice model you have automatically in, uh, included. And including you have always elastic stability uh, uh, of your lattice model as well as of your continuum model. So, so th uh, that what we talk, okay, here you can also uh, plot uh, group velocity and this unusual behavior with a, uh, with a, a new maximum uh, a new, uh, is here by a zero in the group velocity. So this is kind of a, a behavior which you cannot find in classical uh, crystals with only next neighbor 
uh, uh, interactions. So you can generate new dynamic effects by this, uh, by this, moment, by this, yeah, uh, non-local models. So moment, I, yeah. Now we can further this. So far we looked. Uh, up to here to uh, a chain, this has only uh, an arrangement of one atoms, but when we have now a unit cell with n atoms, we can elaborate uh, uh, the approach as well. In this case, the characteristic function becomes an n times n matrix in the number of atoms per unit cells. These coefficients uh, am uh, uh, which we be, uh, be, were before scalar co coefficient with the scaling behavior became, become now matrices and the scaling behavior is mapped on the eigenvalue of the matrices. This n uh, times n matrix determines then the eigenvalues of this n times n matrix determines then the, uh, 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 the uh, dispersion relation. And all the, uh, this uh, postulate what, what we said about the characteristic uh, function uh, is now true for the matrix. So positive definiteness and so on must be now uh, for the, uh, true for this n times n function. The n eigenvalues of this function uh, give the n branches of, of uh, uh, the dispersion relation. Uh, we have here the uh, uh, admissible characteristic matrix here uh, must be chosen such that you have a, uh, uh, n eigenvalues, uh, n minus one eigenvalues always positive. This allows you a zero order here, and uh, one order where the zero order is vanishing, which defines your acoustic branch. Uh, and the uh, eigenvalues uh, are of this when you replace your lambda again by your other eigenvalues of Born von Karman uh, uh, lattice, uh, these eigenvalues define your uh, dispersion, the, your branches of dispersion relation. So in this way you can easily genera uh, generalize this to crystal, to also 3D crystals and, and uh, uh, to, to higher dimensions only to, not only to one, but we elaborated here for for the sake of simplicity to, to, one, um, uh, to one dimension. So here, uh, yeah, here an example for a biatomic, diatomic uh, chain, so per, per unit cell, two atoms. We have two branches, one is, one is the acoustic branch here, and the other in one optical branch, and here for different uh, we are here for a mass ratio, which I think uh, from the from an atom, from a realistic system, right, uh, uh, is chosen a kind of a, which appears in a certain material system. I forgot it. Um, which one? And for different degree of non-locality, alpha equal to zero reproduces here the classical uh, results known from crystal physics. Uh, you can see it in the uh, find it in the book of Ashkar. Uh, I think this kind of zero order classical dispersion relay, but in any book of crystal physics, voila. And uh, here you can find uh, this model in, in, a, in a recent, in this re reference you, you know well in the meantime. So uh, this maybe it's all what I wanted to say almost. So when maybe to summarize, oh yeah. Oh, oh, uh, did I? Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh -huh. Archives of mechanics. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. This is true, yeah. I will correct it. So, uh, just to um, conclude, um, we can, in, for the 1D monoatomic periodic chain, it can be shown that we can write any harmonic potential in this kind of framework with, with the, uh, by utilizing characteristic functions. And uh, we have a direct, uh, it gives a direct interlink between lattice and continuum model in both directions. Either when we have a continuum model, we can reconstruct lattice uh, model and vice versa. And um, uh, yeah, we have the, uh, the characteristic function contains the entire constitutive information in very comp compact form. And by only uh, assuming uh, uh, finiteness of uh, elastic energy 
we get scaling relations of the coefficients which allow this and we, uh, we can also get, um, uh, generalize this approach. We have worked it out for 1D periodic conditions but as soon you know the, uh, the function space of your displacement you can uh, generate uh, uh, also in other frameworks this, this formalism, especially for periodic 2D, 3D. It's rather uh, uh, you can gener uh, generalize it. However, here the, uh, there's an additional problem of anisotropy coming into play, which is absent in the in the 1D case. We only have to deal with symmetric operators. So symm the symmetry self adjointness gives us. Uh, 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 already the uh, symmetry, but you, we have here additional crystal in, in the higher dimensions. We have to have crystal symmetries, which would have to take into account in the different operators, different directions. Uh, so the, there, there's a complication in there. Okay, here again the uh, references. Here's okay, right? <laughs> okay, so thanks. Uh, I think this is all. We can discuss this now further. And uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, when you have some questions, uh, we, we, we have can. We have another uh, talk in mm -hmm. the court. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm.